Okay, uh, my name is Mohammad Riazi, and I'm one of the faculties in uh, Retina Service in UCI, uh, in Gavin Herbert Eye Institute. And I'm going to talk about some uh, information about AMD, age-related macular degeneration. Uh, it's one of the most common cause of central visual loss uh, in patients who are 60 year old or older. And it can cause damage to the central part of the retina, which is called macula, and uh, Dr. Mehta has already shown to you. Uh, depending on the type of the AMD, it can be stable forever, or it can progress slowly over a long period of time, or sometimes it can affect the central vision very fast. We have two types of, two major types of AMD, or age-related macular degeneration. The most common type, which is about 90% of the cases, are dry AMD. And in those cases, it's like this picture, having those dots, yellow dots, in the central part of the retina, which is called drusen. Sometimes it's associated with some pigmentary changes, some changes in the color of the back of the retina, or sometimes when it's advanced, it's uh, associated with some cell layer loss and some patches in the central part. These are called dry macular degeneration. The other type is wet in the right side, and uh, the reason for wet is because it's associated with some kind of leakage from the new vessels or sometimes associated with bleeding under the retina or inside the retina. And although the rate of having wet macular degeneration is so much lower than dry, 10% compared with 90%, but most of the cases which has visual loss are in the wet type. So it's more important than dry. And each category has its own different stages. For example, in the left side, we can see the dry type. It starts with drusen, those dots. And if it goes goes to progress and have more effect, affecting the central part of the macula, we will have in advanced cases some of these patches. In these patches, retina doesn't work. So in these cases, even there's dry macular degeneration, sometimes patient uh, feel some central spots or central dark areas in the center of his or her vision. But in the right side, we have met wet macular degeneration, which starts with some leaking vessels growing under the retina and these vessels are not like normal vessels. They're, they have more fenestrations, more opening in their walls. So they will leak some of the blood or sometimes the whole blood. So in the uh, last situation, we will have bleeding under the retina. And the end stage will be a large scar at the center of the retina. In that case, again, the patient cannot see the central part of any images. So in the end stage of dry macular degeneration, we will have a large patch in the center. And in the wet type, we will have a large scar in the center. In both cases, the patient have the same symptoms cannot see the central part of any image. Here, there's a small animation to show 
the pathogenesis of any AMD, it starts from UV light again hitting the retina here. And there are some molecules released because of inflammation. And those molecules will cause a kind of key molecule production. Its name is VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor. The reason that I'm saying about VEGF, this molecule, is because all of our treatments right now are aimed toward blocking that molecule in wet macular degeneration. Whenever we, for example, inject a medication inside the eye, we are going to block that molecule. What are the symptoms for AMD? It doesn't have any pain. It doesn't have any irritation or any foreign body sensation. All of the symptoms are related to change in the central vision. Sometimes it's like distortion. When you look at a straight line, it will be distorted. Sometimes there's a black spot in the center. Sometimes there's blurred vision in the center. So there's always some change in the central vision. So whenever a patient says that uh, I'm having a problem, I've, I'm having a change in my central vision, we should always rule out the uh, actually different types of macular degeneration. And Right now, I should mention that it won't cause a complete blindness because even if it affects the central part, still the peripheral part is, is working. So who is at higher risk? It's more common in some of the families. So it shows that there are some genetic factors working but not like normal genetic diseases. There are a lot of genes which has been found to have some association with macular degeneration. It's more common in patients with fair skin because we know that pigmentation is a kind of protection for UV light and sunlight. So it's more common in fair skin and more common in those patients who had uh, more exposure to UV light. Smoking, we know that it's, is important and it can increase the rate of having AMD and progression towards more advanced AMD. And also obesity and high blood lipid and high blood pressure, all of these things seems to have a major effect on AMD. How we can monitor our eyes? One of the best ways is using this grid. It's called Amsler grid, and it consists of a black dot at the center and a grid, and we should check our eyes one by one using our reading glass and check it to see if there's any distortion, any black area in the center or anything like this should be considered as abnormal and should be checked. And there are some electronic devices that has been made. Uh, we can check our eyes through those devices to see that if there's any discontinuity in the line or any distortion, then it can automatically report the result to a uh, doctor or your clinic, and then uh, you will be seen as soon as possible. And how we can diagnose the AMD? Of course, by measuring visual acuity, have a, having a dilated fundus exam, checking the back of the eye, and also some of the imaging, like OCT and angiography. OCT is the most valuable imaging system. It can give us a cross section of the retina. And for example, here we can see some
fluid collection here inside the retina or here under the retina. And even we can see some reflectivity from new vessel formation, those tiny blood vessels that can leak and can cause bleeding. And in this case, for example, after injection of some medications to block that molecule, that VEGF, we can see all of them has been gone. And OCT is also helpful for following the patient and see whenever it's active and needs treatment or whenever it's only be followed. For example, here there are a lot of cyst and fluid inside the retina, but here there's no fluid. So at this time, we can only follow the patient and check it and ask him or her to come back in maybe one or two months. These are uh, angiography images. In angiography, we will inject a dye into the vein and uh, check the vessels and leaking point in the back of the eye. For example, here we can see some leakage in the central part of the retina or here there are some leakage and we can diagnose is it active disease or not. So what we can do to prevent from more progression? One of them is to have a healthy diet, rich in green leafy vegetables, because these kind of vegetables have a lot of antioxidant and it can prevent from more uh, severity of the AMD, stop smoking, protect our eyes from UV light, maintain a normal blood pressure, maintain ideal body weight, and having a regular exercise. We can use AREDS formula because it has been shown that in AREDS study, it has been shown that this formula, which consists vitamin C, vitamin E, lutein and zeaxanthin, which are macular pigments, zinc and copper, can decrease the rate of progression about 20 to 25 percent of cases. So we recommend all of the patients, especially whenever it's uh, in a more advanced disease, to take those supplements. In the 1980s, laser has been used to destroy those new vessels, but the problem was actually it can be very destructive to normal tissue. So we no longer use the normal laser to destroy those uh, new vessels. But there are another type of laser, which is called cold laser. We use it as a photodynamic therapy sometimes to prevent from more progression of those vessels. And the most important treatment are those medications which block VEGF. Because we know that VEGF is the most important molecule for progression of wet AMD and having more leakage and having more bleeding. Now we have four medications available. Three of them has FDA approval, but almost all of four has almost equal effectivity although there are some differences between them, but uh, in different studies, it has been shown that they are comparable to each other. The injections can be done in the clinic after using antiseptic to prevent infection, of course, and using some sort of numbing agents. We can do that in the clinic.
And in different studies, it has been shown that although the natural course of wet macular degeneration is towards having uh, a, a lower visual acuity over time, by injecting these medication, not only it prevents from more visual loss, in about more, maybe more than 90% of cases, it can stop it. But in 30 to 40% of cases, it can increase the vision. It can bring it back. So it has been proved that these kind of medications are effective, and uh, we will use it frequently. And there are different treatment regimens based on the type of the lesion, the location, and the bleeding, and uh, the visual acuity of the patient. We can choose to do injection every month or wait uh, whenever it's active. We should have another injection or follow it whenever it's not active. So there are different types of regimens that we can use based on the category of the lesion at the back of the eye. Another thing which is important in advanced type of macular degeneration is visual rehabilitation. Because whenever it's in the advanced and later stages of dry or wet AMD, we will have a central part of the macula which is not working. And in those cases, sometimes we should use visual rehabilitation or low vision aids, which has been done as a teamwork by a retina specialist and an optometrist or ophthalmologist specialized in low vision aids. And those low vision aids comprise of different magnifiers, different telescopes, or different electronic devices, such as CCTV, to make everything a little bit larger or make everything more actually visible uh, to help uh, to have a higher functionality of those patients. But it's more related to advanced type of AMD. And we should know that there are a lot of different clinical trials working on different uh, agents, different medications. There are uh, a lot of ongoing studies on different medications, and I'm sure that every year we'll, we will have another type of medication. And uh, although right now we uh, aim to block the VEGF only, but in the near future we will have also uh, other targets to work on it. Even there are some studies on gene therapy, different viruses, different vectors. Even uh, there are some studies to work on different pumps. To, uh, for example, instead of injecting every month in, into the eye, there are some pumps that can be uh, actually a field every nine months or every six months and then little by little it will release some part of the medication into the eye. And also there are some studies about radiotherapy. So we have all of these things and uh, it's in a dynamic way. Every year we will have new sort of treatments uh, and hopefully we will have some treatment also for dry type macular degeneration. Even here we started some studies on advanced dry macular degeneration to see if we can stop its progression or not. Thank you very much. Whenever 
the central part, which is the most important part of the vision, is lost. We cannot read, we cannot drive, but still we can see something from the periphery. I mean, even if uh, we are in the advanced stages of macular degeneration, it won't make it completely blind and dark. It never happens. Yeah, a good question, yes. Even uh, it's available right now, that camera. But it's not made for macular degeneration. Uh, right now, it's used for those uh, diseases that cause a kind of genetic degeneration of some part of the retina but still some part is working. For example, photoreceptors has been lost, but still some, some of the cells are remaining. So uh, we can put those uh, electrical devices over the retina and it can stimulate the remaining part of the retina and report it to the brain. So right now it's not uh, used for macular degeneration because at that part actually all of the uh, retinal tissue has been destroyed but maybe the next generation of that would be useful for that. Yes, there are some uh, researches on uh, stem cells working on dry macular degeneration to try to regenerate those cells. Yes, there are some ongoing researches on that. For wet, for wet as well? Uh, for wet is more complicated because in dry, we only have degeneration of some part of the retina. But in the wet, not only there's degeneration, but there's a large scar formation over that part. So in that situation, first we should think about maybe removal of that scar and then regeneration. So it's a little bit more complicated. Yeah, actually, if, if you are going to talk as on our evidence, uh, on the studies, ARETS 2, ARES2 showed that when we have only small drusen, some fine small drusen, it's not necessary to use ARES. But in large drusen, which is more than 125 microns, the size, and especially when it's combined with pigmentary changes, we call this type of drusen as intermediate type of macular degeneration. So if we have intermediate and more severe, it has been proven that it's useful. We don't have any evidence for fish oil, but on the other side, we don't have any evidence that it's harmful. So if you like, you can use it, but it's not in the recommended actually supplements that we use for ARIDS too. Does it help in dry eye? Because I yes, it, it's yeah. helpful for dry eye, yeah. And it's a completely different thing. The, the reason for making this kind of pump is to decrease the number of injections, actually. Uh, it's about maybe seven millimeters, something like that. But, but it should be implanted. It, it needs a surgery. Yeah, if, you, if you consider that uh, the cornea, the front part of the retina, uh, the front part of the globe, and these are the muscles, it's between the muscles. So about maybe seven millimeters behind the cornea with this diameter. 
So it's considered a, a kind of actually a major surgery. Actually, it's uh, in the research part of the uh, clinical trial, and it, it should be forever. But like any other kind of implant, there, there can be some exposure, maybe inflammation around it, maybe some kind of infection. So any kind of thing will necessitate uh, removal of that one. I mentioned that we have different kind of regimens for injecting. Uh, some of them is named treat and extend. It means that we should treat it, and then after drying, and after uh, we see that there's no leakage, we can extend the interval from maybe four weeks to six weeks. If after six weeks, again, there's no uh, leakage, no blood, nothing, we can extend it to eight, then 12. And some of the people think that we can stop at 12 weeks and continue injecting every three months, although it's dry. And we call it treat and extend. So there are different regimens based on the, what we can see in OCT, how much your vision is, how much uh, is the vision in the other eye, was there any bleeding or not. So there are different factors working in this decision. Yes, if, uh, for example, we are going to a point of 12 weeks and there was, for example, no bleeding and no recurrence and uh, seems to be very low risk for uh, having uh, bleeding and those things, maybe we will stop and just check it after a few months and see what happens. Uh, there's a possibility of progression in dry macular degeneration also. Even if there's, uh, if there's no leakage, there's a possibility of progression in, in dry macular degeneration to have those patches. So we don't know, is it related to injection or it's related to more progression of dry macular degeneration? You said sometimes with the shots it can even restore the vision. Is that yes. rare? No, no. It, it happens uh, in about 30 to 40 percent of the patients. And restoring the vision means that gaining vision uh, more than two or three lines when you check your vision. Yeah. It happens in about 30 to 40 percent. But in 90 to 95 percent of cases, it will stop from more progression, more visual loss. In, in uh, wet macular degeneration, it's very important to be seen or to be detected as soon as possible because at that point, the new vessels are very tiny. So they are smaller, they are more responsive to treatment and the vision will restore more frequently. Actually, it's controversial. In some of the population studies, it has been shown that after cataract surgery, the rate of activation or reactivation of macular degeneration is higher. But there are, on the opposite side, there are some studies that shows that there's no change after cataract surgery. And most of the doctors believe that there's no relation between cataract surgery and uh, actually activation of macular degeneration. And they believe that in those studies that showed there's some relationship, maybe the patient had it before cataract surgery, but because of the cataract, it's 
too hazy to be able to diagnose it. Yeah, again, this one is controversial. Even the importance of uh, genetic screening has not been proven that it's useful because it's not only one gene. <clears throat> Maybe more than 20 genes has been associated with macular degeneration and the presentation is different in each one of them. So it's a multifactorial disease um, hand in hand, genetic and environmental factors, UV, diets, all of them work together, smoking. So it's not actually a clear cut answer to that. So one factor can enhance another factor. Exactly. Even some of the studies showed that using some of the supplements will be detrimental in some <clears throat> genetic diseases. But again, another paper came that, no, it's not true. So it's controversial. That's why I cannot say a good answer to that. Yeah, it's good to be checked every year, of course. Um, you can check your central vision by using Amsler grid right. is the most important because even between uh, yearly visits, if, if you find anything new, you should let us know. Otherwise, every year examination and having OCT will rule out any kind of macular degeneration. Actually, maybe 20, 15 to 20 years ago, uh, some studies has been done to uh, use some kind of laser in the macula for drusen, and they believe that maybe doing some very mild laser can actually make them disappear. But after a while, it has been shown that even it can, uh, it can make it progress towards new vessel formation. And at the middle of that study, that study has been stopped. So right now, we don't do any laser for drusen. We just observe it. We don't touch it. We don't do any intervention. Because not only uh, there's no evidence for its improvement, but also there are some papers showing that maybe it can have some uh, actually effect toward its progression. No. Lattice degeneration is in the periphery, peripheral part of the retina. And it's more related to the talk of Dr. Mehta. Whenever a patient has lattice degeneration, the rate of having a retinal break during PVD is so much higher. So in lattice degeneration, we should be careful about those signs as new floaters or new flashes because the rate of uh, having retinal detachment and retinal break is higher than normal population. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, yes.